yes sir this is what we're doing today a little bit of tp and a little bit of trigonometry so um trigonometry can't be that bad come on now let's plot a few of these and see how it works out in tp so let's do this okay so i got a no nothing really set up this is just a plane uh with uh many subdivisions in it nothing else on it i ain't got nothing else inside this scene so i'm gonna go ahead and drop in my uh tp system so thinking particle system the plane is for emission really nothing else so pulling up my tp interface i'm not creating any any groups or nothing i'm gonna just create my first um what you call it Let's drop this stuff. So on the position, we're gonna drop in a surface position, and we're gonna go into helpers again and get a node in order to get the data from the scene. And now we need a position born. So on the generator, position born. All right. So the position obviously goes to the position over here, and the position uh, the node plugs into the node. And while we add it, we're gonna select the node, which in our case is this mesh, uh, the plane. We got which we got over there, and now for the surface position, we want to make sure that you meet on the vertices over there. And now we're actually gonna go ahead and uh, right click on this boy right here and say um, object properties, and it has 5,776 um, vertices. So under the pistol shot for the position bond, you're gonna put 5,776. So that way we get as many particles as the grid has vertices. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. Okay and now i can actually just go ahead and visualize that so there you go you got thousand particles well five thousand particles and i won't want no speed or anything on them so i might just reduce the speed no variation or anything and i'm gonna increase the lifespan to above 100 so anything above 100 is good and pretty much we set as far as uh manipulating the data position i'm gonna go ahead turn off edit on the fly and now what you do have over here is just a grid of particles pretty much just lying flat all right nothing special about it now we're gonna plot a few graphs so um let's get our first graph so x plus x multiplied by y so you can actually go ahead and get the position straight off or, or out of this if you want to do that depending on how you want to do it really so i'm not even going to drop a new dynamic set so i might just go ahead right click help us standard and get a point three all right, point three, plug in the particle into the vector, and that should get all the particle positions. Now I'm gonna shift drag this to make a copy of these, and uh, since we're dealing in Y, if you plug in the X and the Y, I mean, if we're dealing in Z pretty much, cause we are uh, in 3ds max. So if I plug in the X and the Y into both of these, nothing we should really change. Now what I need is a operator on the standard. I need a position operator to plug in my um, position data. So I'm plugging the particle into the bond position right there. And now the new position is this right here. And well, nothing should change really because even though the zero, the Z value is not connected, nothing changes because it's, it's actually zero as of right now. Everything on the Z value is actually zero. All you gotta do is like look at it like this and you can see the Z is actually zero. So nothing should change really. Now you can go ahead and manipulate the data straight out from here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is an add a add multiply and I can multiply the X multiply by the Y that should give us a first uh, function so I'm gonna multiply that and plug that value output into the Z over here now what I should have if I do this refresh I have this mesh even though it's really really steep but you can see the shape that it creates now you probably might need to uh, reduce the um, size that it has so i'm gonna go ahead and shift drag this one more time and plug this over here and i'm gonna go ahead and get a float so under helpers i'm gonna stand it i'm gonna go ahead and get a float all right and i'll plug the value over here and now if i can go ahead and just re increase the value for the float uh oh i need actually need to plug in the float the, the this attribute into the Z over here so that way you get the reduced value and actually for one I want to make sure this is a multiply so it is multiply already so just get pop up my UI one more time and click on the float and increase the number and now you can see our fast function right here so that's the fast function 
NTP, get the second function, which is x to the power of 2 plus x to the po y to the power of 2. Now, that should be fair enough. Okay, assuming we don't need this guy no more, you're just going to pull him up. We're going to leave this guy over here because we're going to, we might be using him a little bit more. So, we're just going to leave him over here. But we need one more of these, which is going to multiply. Now, x to the power of 2, you can just plug in x two times in our case. And that, that should pretty much um, have you a multiplication of x two times. I'm going to shift drag one more time and plug in the y, same, same way. So y two times, and now you need to add those. So I'm gonna go ahead, shift drag, add one of those, and now I'm gonna make this an addition. So click on the add, and now I'm gonna plug that in to this right here. So you're pretty much gonna be just jumbling a whole lot of stuff inside here. And now if you go back over here and refresh this, what you have is your second shape over here, and you can see the function. I mean second function. So pretty neat stuff. Pretty neat stuff. So now um. When you think about it, we already got some of the others uh, already calculated with this because CP uh, gives us the data. So if you do uh, what you call it, uh, subtraction, you get that kind of shape. All right. And if you do a uh, division, you get that kind of shape. And if you do a multiplication, you get that kind of shape. So that means pretty much you're done with all of those. Now, to the power of three, it will be the same thing, only you need, you need to multiply the function that you got over here one more time. Now you might you want to use expressions after this. Then going right along we're gonna do sine of x. We're gonna see how that looks like. So I'm gonna just drag this guy down over here and this guy obviously. So we're gonna do sine of x. So I'm gonna go down help us black boxes. I'm gonna do a math. Uh, I'm gonna get a sine. So sine. And now all you need to do is actually plug the sine of x right here and plug the value output to the um, the one that we got going into the z value over here we're gonna have to jumble up a whole lot of stuff 